On our uh, phone right now, we have the MHA for Harbor, Maine, the Minister of Environment and Conservation and Minister Responsible for the Multi-Materials Stewardship Board and Office of Climate Change, Energy Efficiency and Emissions Trading, Mr. Tom Hederson. Good evening, sir. Good evening, uh, Pete. How are you this evening? We am beat out just by reading out your titles and everything you're responsible for. Oh, yeah, I tell you, I'm just uh, looking at my responsibilities as you went down through them. And uh, I tell you, uh, on uh, days like today, uh, we understand, or I understand, the full responsibility I have, Pete, because today I had to uh, uh, basically tell, uh, you know, the Aboriginal groups in uh, Labrador that the George River herd was no longer available for hunting. And Mm -hmm. uh, you can understand, perhaps as well as I can understand, uh, you know, that's a big blow to uh, the Aboriginal people. Uh, to uh, the Aboriginal people, our First Nations, and mm. uh, to come down to, uh, you know, that mighty herd to come down to the numbers that it is right now uh, mm. certainly is of great concern to all of us. And uh, I just listened to the chief, and uh, mm. I can understand where he's coming from, Pete. There's no doubt about that. But uh, this, to be frank here, we you were really just speaking uh, through the announcement today uh, that there will yes. be a five-year ban on that uh, George River herd. You were speaking to the Innu Nation, right? Because yes, they're the indeed. only group that... Uh, that has not signed on essentially and agreed that they would not uh, well, continue hunting. Yes, uh, within a, a Labrador, Pete, right? right. Uh, because yes. you got to look outside of Labrador too. Because if we were just dealing with the Aboriginal groups in Labrador, you know, well, I got great trust and faith in, in those groups uh, because they're they are responsible hunters. And by the way, Pete, this is no blame on hunters. Uh, you know, that herd has been hunted, and uh, you know, when we looked at what we could do, unfortunately, our last step, and we've had some steps. We've, you know, there were two. Uh, uh, two caribou per license in years gone by. We stopped that. Uh, we uh, we uh, eliminated the uh, the non-Aboriginal or resident uh, uh, hunt for uh, the other Labradorians. Uh, we've uh, banned commercial, uh, the outfitters and so on. So the only group that were hunting the herd are indeed our Aboriginal groups. And this year, unfortunately, it came down to uh, to because the herd has continued to decline. Mm-hmm. And since their count last fall, you know, we're gone from 20, 27,000 down to uh, under 20,000 in just a year. And it hasn't stopped. And we fully expect, uh, Pete, that this herd is going to go down possibly to, in the next two or three years, to just a mere thousand. Uh, I have so many questions for you. First yeah. of all, um, do you have any indication whatsoever? That Quebec may follow and uh, and ban the hunting uh, in in that province as well. That's the other side of the coin, Pete. Because once the, the herd, uh, and even if the herd doesn't uh, leave our jurisdiction, uh, you know uh, the Aboriginal rights indicate that uh, they they recognize no boundaries, mm-hmm. and therefore they have a right as well to hunt within our province as any of our ab- no, our resident Aboriginal groups. But not with so, this ban, I assume. No, and the difference now, and the trump card is conservation, mm-hmm. and uh, with all Aboriginal agreements, and that uh, we, we don't dispute their rights, Pete, and we. We very much respect their rights. It is the fact that this ban has been put in place uh, because of conservation purposes. Right? Uh, we believe that if we don't do uh, continue to monitor and uh, ban on hunting, uh, that the decline is still going to happen, and you know, herd may not uh, recover. So it's for uh, environmental conservation purposes, and therefore uh, we can extend that ban to all Aboriginal groups even those not in our province. Yeah. So what we're saying, but that herd does travel outside the province and then it becomes the, under the stewardship of the Quebec government. Mm-hmm. We have uh, made representation. Uh, today we found all the groups uh, prior to our announcement to give them the heads up mm-hmm. and, again, to ask for their support, right. okay. including well, our Quebec government, by the way. Right. Now, uh, clearly, obviously, yes, you're right. I, I mean, uh, you can't... Uh, when it comes to potential extinction, yep. you can't quibble with that. It doesn't matter how we got here to this point. Uh, you just can't allow uh, the extermination of a complete uh, species, uh, you know, no matter rights or no rights. Exactly. And, Pete, on the number, uh, uh, as you read through the, uh, the release, we're saying five years. We believe that it will take at least five years before we can get back to hunting. 
but uh, you know um, uh, the other uh, groups in Asivut and uh, Nunatunavuk uh, they talked about two years and we're going to do a review after the second year mm. now if the uh, herd is level out and there's an opportunity for a limited hunt maybe we can do it then but we wanted to put it out there that we believe five years five years will be unless something changes mm. I'm going to put it out there that five years is probably not going to prove to be a whole lot because A we don't seem and, to have a good handle on what's causing the uh, rapid decline well when you look at the causes but you got to look at a whole range of things right mm -hmm. disease mm -hmm. uh, you know with 800,000 over the last decade or so trancing over that countryside they literally ate themselves out of house and home mm -hmm. we use that term naturally right mm -hmm. so what we're finding is that you know uh, the land is not recovering as quickly as we would hope it to, to. Mm -hmm. with the less numbers now hopefully the, the land can come back um, with regard to uh, you know, modern uh, uh, roads and that, the trans Labrador Highway, uh, the technology, our GPS and that, making it easier to find the herd. Uh, access is a lot easier. You know, our, our snow machines, mm -hmm. uh, our predators, uh, you know what I mean? They're having an effect as well. So you got to put all of those climate change, Pete, right? And if we could talk all night about what the variables are. So just looking at one mm -hmm. is not going to look at the whole overall picture. No, which is why I say five years is probably very optimistic. Yeah, it's almost like it's the same as what they said. Uh, yeah, how long would they, they put the cod moratorium in place for originally? Exactly. You know? And uh, so, uh, like you said, we we are going on uh, on the premise that uh, we want to see how far the herd is going to go down, and we're going to try and intervene as much as we possibly can. And really, our only to uh, get in there and make sure that there's no uh, uh, no more hunting because hunting every year is taken out when it, when it was uh, fifty thousand or three hundred thousand you know thousand here and a thousand there didn't seem to make a big difference but now that it's down to twenty thousand mm. fifteen hundred a thousand two thousand that's a lot of animals in any given year well here's here's my next question uh, this was a precipitous drop it uh, once it started it really uh, went rapidly. But why did we have to get to under 20,000 before this particular step was taken in this province? Well, basically, we, we, we started, I don't know if you can go down the ladder or up the ladder. We started to, uh, three years ago, started to cut back on the uh, on the uh, hunting. Uh, and, of course, now that's gotten us to the point because the last thing we wanted to do was take away the aboriginal hunt. And by taking away the others, we then observed the herd and said, listen, this is making a difference that we can, you know, level it off. But it didn't be, and it kept leveling to a point now that we say, listen, we got no other choice. But but are we you know be late in the game because it seems to me now we're down to 2.5 percent of that 800,000 or so that w w was around in the 80s. So should we have you know arrived at this point earlier when when it was 50,000 or even 40,000? Well, when when you look at it, what is the number? Because uh, once again that herd did go down in the uh, I guess in the 60s was down around the you know the two to five thousand and recovered. But again, uh, you know, have we gone down too far? Pete? Only time will tell. And uh, like you said, uh, right now we're dealing with the president and saying, listen, we got to pull out all the stops, make sure we're doing everything we can over the next three to five, two to five years, uh, and do what we can uh, to encourage the growth of this particular herd. And uh, okay. that's where we're at. You just told um, me something I didn't know. Did you say that the herd was down to five or six oh, yeah, and, in the and, uh, I don't know exactly what the number was, but uh, this has been a cycle. Every 50 to 70 years, you will see this, uh, Pete. So, you know what I mean? Uh, but it's at a point now, given the, the circumstances now, the land, the climate change, all the things that I described to you, far different than it was, let's say, 50 years ago. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, the chief was right in saying that, you know, uh, the, the, the different developments that have taken place naturally are going to have some effect, mm -hmm. right? But looking at the big land, there should be enough land uh, in Labrador to be able to sustain uh, a viable herd and uh, allow development to go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And on that, too, um, our hammer, uh, Pete, when we look at developments in Labrador, in any part of our province, we we do the environmental assessment, and part of that assessment is to look at the effect that any one project will have 
on the land, on the animals, on the plant life, and we charge then whoever's doing it to accommodate the the uh, the plant life and animal life to make sure that everything has been done to ensure that they they go uh, you know uh, unmolested so to speak and allow them to roam the land the food and so on mm-hmm. during calving season if a development is ongoing we may ask them to uh, stop during that particular period doing what they're doing to allow the calving to take place so that they they won't be disturbed. Uh, they won't be disturbed. So these are things that we include in the life of any project. 